Hey guys, and welcome to The Family Fudge. I am Jennifer, and today I have a highly requested video for you. I'm gonna be giving you a tour of our homeschool room. You're gonna get a sneak peek of the items that we're using, how I keep them organized, and of course, most of these things are budget friendly because they were either free or I bought them secondhand. Okay guys, so before I start on this tour, I wanna to give a little bit of a backstory in case you're new here. Like I said, my name is Jennifer, and I have four kids that are seven and under. So in our homeschool this year, I will have a third grader, a kindergartner, a preschooler, and then I also have a one-year-old. And my kids do actually sort of a hybrid homeschool system. So one day a week, they do attend a public school as well. So hopefully they're getting the best of both worlds. I'm hoping. We also do co-ops and PE classes and music classes and things like that. But today I'm just gonna show you my homeschool room and keep in mind that you don't have to have a dedicated room to homeschool. You don't have to have all the materials to homeschool. And that's really the beauty of being a homeschooler is that you can do it however you wanna do it. So I have a lot of stuff in this room. So I'm gonna to try to go wall by wall and show you as much as I can. But if I miss anything or if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also, you can check out last year's homeschool room tour. If you're curious to see how it looked last year, versus this year. Like I said, I'll go ahead and link it down below if you wanna check it out. Our homeschool room is located right off the front entrance of our house. In this room that used to be our office. It's not too big, not too small. We definitely make it work for us. The only drawback is that there are no doors to this room. So sometimes it's hard to keep the kids out when I don't want them in there, especially my one-year-old. Now, if you saw the homeschool room tour from last year, you'll know that this area looks a lot different because <laughs> this whole shelf used to have just my books and this one used to have my husband's books, but we needed to make more space for the kids curriculum this year because we're using Bookshark, which is literature based. So we have a lot of new books that I want to keep organized. And that's basically what we have on the shelf, lots of books. At the top of our shelf, I have all of our shower caddies, which I'm actually using to corral all of our pens and markers and crayons, supplies like that. We have one basket per child, and I also have my own basket. So it's very easy to just take the basket off the shelf, use what we need, and then put it back. And I like to keep them up high so the kids can't get them when I don't want them to. Now over here in these clear scrapbook containers, I have my daughter's scrapbook supplies and a couple other educational games that we like to play with on occasion. Right next to our bookshelf, I have this hanging scheduler that I got from Target, but I actually haven't filled it out yet because we're still figuring out what kind of schedule works for us. On this wall, we also have our pencil sharpener and our art easel from Ikea and we just tuck it away when we're not using it. Now on the very top section of our shelf, I have things that the kids do not need to get into, documents and receipts and things like that. And then we have the plastic bins. These two are actually empty right now, so there's some room to grow. In this one, I have all of our Expo markers and my whiteboard cleaner. And in this one, I have extra name tags. Oh yes, you guys, and don't mind the scratches and the dings on the furniture. Like I said, most of these things came secondhand. A lot of them we even got for free off of Craigslist. And so they're not in perfect condition, and I'm totally fine with that. Now the rest of these white baskets came from the Dollar Tree, so they were super affordable. And I'm using them to keep track of items that we don't need to use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I've categorized them by subject and type. So first off, we have a basket of DVDs. These are mostly tree schooler DVDs. These are awesome. These are mostly science-based, but there's also some sign language as well. Now in the basket labeled art, I do have my art DVD curriculum, but I also have a lot of other things. I have the Story of the World CDs, and I also have all of our science DVDs. I also have a Liberty's Kids, 
a Spanish for Children, and a Matthew C. Beta DVD, even though we're not using Matthew C. this year. Next up, we have the Language Arts Basket. So these are just things that go along to support our curriculum. We have different games and flashcards, things like that. Then next to that, I have our Supply Basket. So we have extra crayons and markers, colored pencils, and things like that. Moving further down, I have all of our read aloud books. Now these are books that we all read together in the morning as we start our homeschool day. And a lot of these are sentimental books or they teach a moral story, a moral lesson, something like that. They're feel good stories. And next to that, we have all of our third grade books for the year. Now, like I said, we're using Bookshark this year which is a literature-based curriculum. So we have a lot of really awesome classic books. I know my daughter's gonna love reading them. Moving on over to the kindergarten books. Again, we're using mostly Bookshark, but I also have a few items from my father's world as well. Lots of really good books in here. So it's gonna be really easy for me to just come and grab whatever book we need for the week, or the month, or however long we need it. Next to that, I have all of my preschoolers' books. These are definitely some of my favorite books. I read them with Mackenzie, I read them with Jackson, and now it's Lily's turn. Moving on down, we come to the math basket. Now this does not have any manipulatives in here because they're small pieces and I don't want my one-year-old to get them. But I do have Telly the Time Clock, lots of different math flashcards, our little learning clocks, and our scale which is missing a piece, I really need to find that. Next to that, I have some of our science things. We have a few books that we don't use very often, but we still wanna have ready to go. And in the back here, I have a box with all of the materials we need for our kindergarten science experiments for the year. Moving on over to our history basket, we have lots of novels in here, Mackenzie is going to be doing American history this year, so most of these are for her. We also have our timeline book in here. And lastly, we have our social studies basket, which isn't very full at all because most of this is done with a regular old textbook. Now moving on to the corner, we did get a new desk for this area. Since this is the area that I like to meet one-on-one -on -one with each child, we definitely needed a bigger desk. We got this one from Walmart. It's not very sturdy. I, I don't know that I would recommend it. On this first shelf, we are keeping a bin of toys that I can give my one-year-old to keep him busy when I'm working with the children. Moving on from our corner, we have our large IKEA bookshelf which I got for half off because it was used. Along the top here, I still have my letter line, which is really awesome because it also includes the sign for that letter as well, which I really like. At the very top here, we have a sorter for all of our construction paper. Next to that, we have more scrapbook containers. And all of those are actually empty right now, except for the one at the top. Next to that, we have our microscope, a paper cutter, and our globe. And now moving on to more books. In this area, I generally like to keep textbooks, reference books, and things with hard covers. I really like these National Geographic books, they are awesome. So this is kind of the science section, and this is more of the history and encyclopedia section. We also have a really good amount of poetry books this year. Next to that, I have a paper sorter from Ikea but I'm actually using this for our computers because some of the kids' schoolwork is actually done online. So each kid has their own computer and we just keep them here nice and high so they can't get at them unless they have permission. At the top we have a tablet and at the bottom we have an old computer that only works sometimes. Moving on over to our next section, in this little file folder I have some paint with water books and things like that. And in this one is where I keep all of our virtues curriculum. And then in this one, I have lots of workbooks that I got at the Dollar Tree and at Target. We don't use these all the time, but they're nice to have on hand. Moving to our next section. In this little file folder, I have some Brain Quest games. In this middle section, I have all of our maps and stickers. And in this one, I have extra folders. 
This next section down here is definitely for the teacher. I have a lot of manuals and lesson plans and things like that. And then we continue on to what I like to call the binder section, where we keep all of the binders. The pink are Mackenzie's, the orange ones are Extras, the green ones are Jackson's, and the purple ones are Lily's. Now we're at the beginning of our school year, so a lot of these things are empty still. And the white ones are filled with old curriculum that we're not currently using. Oh yes, and tucked away over here, I have some of our biography books that Mackenzie really loves. Now in this next section, we have a lot of workbooks, readers, and puzzles. We have a drawing book, our grammar book, lots of different workbooks. And these really fun puzzles came from Costco. And now we're moving on to the bin shelf. Each person, including myself, has a bin. And these are kind of like the junk drawer of the schoolroom. These black fabric bins on the bottom are pretty much the same as they were last year. I have my laminator in there, math manipulatives, art supplies, things like that. But I did change out this bottom one. My one-year-old was always getting into this specific drawer. So I took everything out and put toys in there instead. Moving on from our shelf, we come to Mackenzie's desk area. She has this little organizer I got at Costco, and I use this a lot like a work box system. So she has these different drawers, and she'll just go from one to the next until all the work is done. I also keep a book for her to read, and then all of her dittos go in these folders. So each day she'll take a different folder out and complete the contents. Above that, we have this little hanging file where I like to keep her vocabulary cards and spelling words, things like that. Now we are still using this ginormous magnetic whiteboard that we actually got for free a few years ago because somebody was throwing it away. And then in the middle here, we have Lily's section. She has her own little organizer this year with the same setup as her sister. So she just goes through each little drawer completes the task, and then moves on to the next drawer. Next to Lily's section, we have a place for her to track the weather and the days of the week. Now I printed this off of confessionsofahomeschooler.com and it was free, I'm not sure if it still is, but I've used this with all of my kids. In the center of our desk, we also have an electric pencil sharpener. And then in this corner, we have some magnetic storage for things like paper clips but they're empty right now. Then over here we have some cards from our Virtues curriculum, and I'd like to keep those up at all times. And then next to that we have our new incentive program. The kids are earning money to spend at Disneyland. At the very top we have our Pledge of Allegiance and our flag. Now here we have Jackson's organizer, and it's set up just like the others, where he has his book of the day, and all of his different workbooks and projects that he needs to work through. Now if he has some online work to do, I'll go ahead and put his laptop right in there for him. It fits perfectly. Above that is where we keep his vocabulary words. Above that we have the My First Calendar. Lastly in this corner we have this really awesome Lakeshore Learning Pocket Chart, which was a free hand-me-down and we love it. This one is all about the alphabet. So each letter comes with a little poem card, and there's also a tracing card and photo cards that go with each letter. My kids really love this and I do too. Okay friends, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Also, let me know in the comments down below if you're a homeschooler, what made you wanna start homeschooling? I'm very curious to find out because I think that's probably the number one question people ask me is why did you wanna homeschool? And my short answer is, is that it just felt right for my family. And so far, so good, I think. <laughs> so, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.